Welcome to Finance in Excel video number 61. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 7, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Finance Excel class. Hey, in this video here, we want to talk about evaluation method for stocks. Now, there are lots of different valuation methods for stock in this textbook. They talk about just one, and pretty much the other ones we're going to talk well the one we're going to talk about is based on future cash flows oh yeah that's what we've been talking about throughout this whole book and the future cash flows for stocks are dividends now there are other valuation methods and most of them require that you are pretty good with accounting all right so let's just look at a hypo hypothetical situation here let's just say there was a stock and we knew exactly what the dividend was going to be at time one. So one year from now, two year from now, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And at time eight, we also knew exactly what we were going to sell it for. Well, this wouldn't be so hard because we've already seen valuation techniques for exactly this. So I'm going to type time. And this is one. I'm going to type a two. Enter. I'm going to highlight this and then drag it down, down to 8. Now I'm going to type a late, this will be our time, right? We'll do our uh, present value of future cash flows. This will be the cash flow. And we pretty much have exactly what we want here. Equals, and I'm going to click right there. That's the cash flow one year out, a dividend, right? All the way down to 7. It's just 8. We're going to have this cash flow and we're going to sell the stock. So here I'm going to do Alt equals and then highlight these two right here. All right, so there's our cash flow. And now we could, these are future cash flows. So now we could take the present value of all these equals PV. And the rate our required return is 15%. That's our discounting rate. That can be tricky to calculate um, sometimes for stocks. We'll see later in the uh, this class uh, some methods of trying to figure out what the required return is. Uh, NPER, we have that. It's a relative cell reference. PMT, nope, comma, to skip over that, and our future value. The type is going to be end. It, by default, it knows end, so we leave it out. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Now I can come down here and Alt equals for auto sum. And then down here I could say PO. And I'm going to show you this great trick. You know, see how the, we have these subscripts and sometimes you want uh, superscripts? You highlight this and you got to go to the font group, which is Control Shift F. And then click that right there. I do Alt B. I do this all the time. So I know Control Shift F, Control Shift F, Alt B, Enter. And so stock at price at uh, time zero, because all these future cash flows were discounted back, I'm going to say equals minus this. All right, and uh, let's see, I'm highlighting all those. I'm going to add some formatting. By the way, I highlighted all these non contiguous areas using the control key. Uh, right there, I'm going to pick some color. All right, so that's the hypothetical situation. Um, there are some problems with <laughs> using future cash flows from a stock, and I'm sure you could think of uh, what some of them, uh, what some of the problems are. Um, problems with using dividends for future cash flows. The board may or may not declare dividends. Remember, we talked about this last video or the video before. The dividends are dependent on the board of directors declaring them and then paying them out. It's not like debt, where interest payment for debt is a contractual obligation. You have to pay it. The board may declare them. They may not. Now, in with publicly traded companies, uh, companies, when they say they're going to pay them, they like to pay them because it's a bad sign when they don't pay them. And usually, they're pretty predictable. So you. Um, definitely can for some companies that look predictable, you can use future dividends. All right, but that's problem number one. Problem number two, the board can declare whether whatever amount they would like, right? There is no contractual amount. It's not like 
debt that says you will pay 5%. Now again, companies uh, like to be pretty predictable and the, comp well, the ones that are, you can use the discounting uh, future dividend cash payment method. Right? But these are two problems. And then finally, the, fi the, the third one is what future price would you use, right? We, we just uh, guess, basically. Oh, it says, okay, eight years from now, it's going to be selling for 25 bucks. Yeah, right. Like, we know that for sure. Ah, but this uh, concept will be helpful for us. Let's go over to our PDFs, which also can be downloaded. Um, and I want to look at this. If you do, if there is a way, and again, we will see a few situations where dividends can be used to value the stock. Um, but here's the hypothetical. Price at time zero, we have dividend one, two, three, dot, 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 all the way out to some future point, right? Here's the actual price we're going to sell the stock for way in the future, right? If I blow this up. So this is uh, our price way in the future. And uh, this is our, actually, I can already see that. That's our um, discount rate. It actually should be uh, an exponent here. But the point here is, at some point when this gets way in the future, because, oh, yeah, stocks have an unlimited life. It's not like a bond contract that says 30 years, right? Stocks, hypothetically, can go on forever. So the in developing a model, a math model, to calculate uh, present value future cash flows for a stock, they assume that at some point this is going to be way, way in the future, and when you discount it back, it gets you know close to zero. So what they say is then the model gets reduced down to just this. The, pr the price of the stock at time zero is just all of the future dividends discounted back. So that's the concept here, right? And you, some people say, well, you know, what about the stocks that don't play dividends? Well, guess what? That's just like a financial black hole. There's no way. Eventually, companies have to pay dividends, right? Would you make an investment in something that would never pay cash? Now, you, you, then you, the retort is, well, you know, it's just I'm going to hold it for a while and then sell it, and they're never going to. But at still, at some point in the future, they have to pay dividends or it just is like a, a financial black hole. So ultimately, the problem is, can we predict future dividends? Well, we're going to see three situations where we can, and the next three videos will cover these. A constant dividend, right? It just pays $2, $2, $2. Oh, yeah, we already talked about that last video, or two videos ago. Preferred stock does have a stated amount that it pays. Another situation, constant growth. Right? Companies, some predictable companies tend to have a um, uh, predictable growth rate for their dividend, so we can use this model. And finally, super normal growth. That just means you, you increase in some abnormal pattern, but then at some point in the future, you um, steady off and then you grow at a cons constant rate. All right, so in our next three videos, we'll see the, the math models for these. And again, the caveat is it's all estimation, right? Because there is with stocks, we just don't have a contract. The cash flows are not guaranteed. But um, in some, for some companies, these models do work. All right, we'll see you next video.